One of the weirdest parts about filming your life for the internet is doing things and not filming your life for the internet. And I ended up getting a lot of stuff done in the greenhouse, in the garden, over the weekend that I was like, oh no, I probably should have shared this with you guys. But it's okay because don't worry, I have a ridiculously long to-do list to get through today as well. It's really important for me whenever I'm making design decisions about something I'm adding to the house or to the gardens is I really, really want it to be both form and function. I want it to be beautiful and I want it to be functional and I want it to function in multiple ways because we don't actually have like unlimited space here. I know it kind of looks like it because we've got these fields behind us, but we don't even own those. So the area that I'm working in is actually fairly small. With the hometown structures greenhouse specifically, I was creating a space where I was doing gardening, but I was also doing a lot of gardening adjacent activities, things like preserving the harvest, drying, everything like that, but also just organizing and a place where I could do projects that could get pretty messy, especially in the fall, which is such an in-between season in the garden. Like we've got a lot of new baby plants starting and older stuff kind of on its way out. And we're trying to make the most of those last few harvests. So I'm gonna show you what I kind of got done this weekend first. All right, so we've slowly been moving even more and more of the pepper and eggplants and squashes that were in here outside and they're just like in the gravel out there because I need all this space for brand new potted seedlings. So I'm doing container gardening in here this time, but like with these ones, we had just like a single pepper because these were much larger plants. I knew they needed all the root space for themselves. Whereas a lot of the stuff that we're growing for fall and for winter has much smaller root structures. This is a lacinato kale and radishes, and we'll be able to do multiple successions of like radishes and things around like the main crop that will keep us going through the winter. My zuna and lettuce, endive and lettuce, prism kale, haven't thrown anything in this one yet because we're trying to stagger the plantings out. This is just tender green mustard. This is gai choy and mosh. This one's just beets arugula, Swiss chard, lettuce and tat soy, arugula, Swiss chard, lettuce and tat soy again, and this one's just all carrots. So I still have space for two, four, even six more planters here, and I do have more planters outside. So those ones are coming in soon. I'm just kind of letting them air out first with the new soil. There's still some productive vines going up back here, but I did start some new snap peas. So we'll have snap peas going in this container, up, 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 up. And then even in this back one, which is the rattlesnake beans, I put more of those snap peas in. So once the rattlesnake beans are done, which you can see they're getting there, we will have another green crop growing up that corner to fill in the gap. Since we're growing with protection, and this will work even if you're talking about growing for fall and winter outside in the lower zones, six and below, as long as you have some cover, you don't need to worry quite as much about your first frost date. Like ours is around Halloween typically, and I'm honestly not too concerned about that because things are protected in here. The biggest concern is our days to maturity in terms of shortening daylight hours. Hours. So by around like the first week of December, we don't have enough daylight hours for a seedling to grow, germinate, and reach maturity. I do need to do succession planting so that we have fresh crops going in until daylight hours are too short. So we're still going to be planting a lot of stuff up through October and maybe even November, we'll see, so that those plants reach maturity by the shortest daylight hours of the year and they can just kind of hold in the soil and we can harvest them even when the growth slows because there's not enough daylight hours. So we'll still have plenty of stuff growing in here very late into the year. I'm hoping all the way through the entire year. So we'll be growing in here all winter long. There's certain things that we'll have to move inside. And of course, we're gonna be using the space more for other things than growing over the next few months because most of the growing is gonna be taking place on just two tables here. This table will probably end up being kind of empty because of the frost covers that I got to protect the plants. Like it just didn't make sense to do all three tables. But since I'm spending a lot more time out here now that it's not so hot, I did kind of go through and switch some things up. We got a bigger table right here, moved some of the furniture around, added this drying rack, which I'll link for you guys. It's so nice. These are removable bamboo trays. I got my banner up finally. I wanted to do this for so long. So this basically completed the second half of the greenhouse that I really was still just kind of mulling over exactly how I wanted it 
to look long term but I'm gonna just straighten up these shelves and then we'll get into my seed saving method for these shelves because they're gonna be totally unprotected from the elements and we're not really heating the greenhouse so much this year I can't really grow anything in these once the temperatures start to really drop I could probably put like tat soy in one of these containers which is what I'm planning to do so we'll plant some tat soy in here I have this system that I started using last year for saving my seeds because when I save seeds from the garden I'm sure you can relate seeds end up just absolutely everywhere and that wasn't working for me anymore so my mom actually found this really cool little seed chest I will link this for you down below obviously we had it customized with the cottage peach you could put whatever you want on the front of it but it just slides open and there's all these vials now the vials don't come with it it's something you just grab separately but the creator of the box sends you the link so you have everything that you need so you just order the vials separately and then you can fill them with your seed so i've just labeled them with a little piece of craft tape so we do have some marigolds saved from last year and this year i saved way 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 too many because marigolds are so easy to save and they go to seed really really fast if you're not paying attention so i just dried like the whole seed flower pod and i take them out they kind of remind me of porcupine quills and just add them to our little vial i just did a whole podcast episode on the garden girls podcast with me meg and amy talking about our favorite seeds to save and I love doing this podcast with them because we're just getting like more and more unhinged like every single episode gets weirder and weirder I will put the show link up above so that you guys can subscribe to that channel too because we're just over there having a blast and I have to say that's been one of the coolest parts about this job honestly is finding these two and they've become two of my really really good friends through this whole process like being a creator on the internet especially a female creator can be really isolating and weird sometimes just have the a really special bond with each other it has made this like career so much more rewarding so sometimes i leave these marigold like the petals on and i try to like pinch the base to separate the petals from the actual seed before i open it up and then if you do it carefully enough you can keep them all like parallel to each other when you open it i just think they're so pretty marigolds are my number one companion plant they solve so many problems in the garden i attribute them to a big part of why we didn't have hornworm issues on the tomatoes other than that one tomato that got like decimated in a matter of hours once we took care of that no more I got some more marigolds and I didn't see any others. So I highly recommend grabbing some marigolds and then saving the seeds because you'll never ever have to buy the seeds again. I mean, this is just two flowers worth. That's hundreds of flowers that I won't have to spend money on next year. This New Zealand spinach, I think you guys probably saw me complaining about it in the garden because I've been pulling it out all summer. I planted it one time, one time last year. And now it just keeps popping up all summer, all fall long. Now it's been popping up and I'm so sick of it. So this is a big part of why having the greenhouse, not just insulated, but with a solid wall so that it has like this other functional half of it has been so important because when we're gardening, and I think a lot of you will be able to re relate to this, even if you're not like, gardening full-time for content creation like I am like we have a lot of tasks that are outside of the garden that need to be taken care of and can be pretty messy so it's nice to have a spot where we can do those things I will just leave seeds and plants drying everywhere like there's just paper towels with things just scattered around all over the kitchen counter and having a dedicated space having a dedicated drying rack making things functional in a way that like is an investment in something that you love to do, first of all, which applies to so many things in our lives, not just gardening. It gives you permission to just kind of settle in and focus up and kind of enter into more of like a flow state with what you're working on too. Another area that hides all my messes because, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a lot of messes. I think having like a space like this that's enclosed allows me to kind of just drop things and go and not worry about it and just move on to the next thing that I need to get done. 
And it also like eliminates time wasted wondering where stuff is when I need it. So I know where everything is because it's all, I swear this is organized <laughs> in these drawers. So I've got like fertilizer, I've got like extra decor items. This is a green stock cover that will go on once it gets cooler. Like it's just the most random assortment of stuff like that. But I know where everything is and in the meantime, I don't have to look at it. I've been waiting for this package to come in. I'm so excited for this. If you haven't already ordered your seed garlic for planting this year, you should do it soon. And this is not an ad. I don't have a recommendation for you to already get it. I get it somewhere new every year because I like testing out different places. Wow, that's really big. Okay, cool. But garlic tends to sell out really, really fast. So that's why you have to get on it right away. This is a pound of garlic. And this is usually what I plant to get that full baskets worth of garlic. But oh my gosh, so this is a music variety which I pretty much grow every single year. And this is probably the best looking bulbs that I've gotten from a company as seed garlic. Seed garlic determines how well your garlic is gonna do in the garden. If you get a big variety of music, you're gonna grow a bigger variety of music. Last year, I just didn't find that the seed garlic that I had was as large as I expected it to be for music. And as a result, I grew smaller music garlic bulbs, which was kind of disappointing. One of the things that we were dealing with all summer was just figuring out the ventilation situation in here because it gets so hot. Even with having this excellent cross breeze from the double door all the way across to these windows, we were still dealing with temperatures like 10 to 20 degrees warmer than outside. So I ended up getting this whole house fan. And as you can see, it's no longer really warm enough to need something like like that so I'm gonna pull out the fans and just stick them in the basin to store them I also replaced the hanging chair because when I got the bigger table I moved the apothecary down it just started to look really busy here so I still have the hook in the ceiling and I'm probably going to hang some kind of like dried plant wreath off of it instead but the new chair I think works so much better in this kind of little apothecary corner we've got going on in here so, oh my god the screen is so gross Oh, we're gonna have to clean that, okay. All right, this thing needs a deep clean too, but I'm just gonna get it out of here. <laughs> Green stalks looking very happy. We've got some little baby seedlings coming up. Lots of good, happy things happening in these green stalks. And this is the one that we really planted out for that video. It's got some baby seedlings coming up everywhere. I still haven't been able to let go of this okra because look, it's like, I'm gonna start producing now. Of course you are. So things are just starting to pop up in here. It's looking pretty good. One thing that I did not anticipate with the hanging planters was how high up they would be. So they look really cute, except that they're full of dead plants now because I can't reach them so they didn't get watered. So that's kind of a problem for another day because lifting those down just is not in the cards right now. However, I do wanna just pop up here and check on the vines that I've got going on behind them. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's just like a mess of vines climbing up here. And these are the rattlesnake beans and they're starting to kind of dry up. But I have these clips that just adhesive sticky to the rafters. You can, they're houseplant clips for like your pothos, but they just stick to whatever you put them on and open and close so you can add vines to them. But the Malabar spinach is so cool. I'm gonna show you up close. Okay, so the Malabar spinach comes up these bamboo trellises and then I had another bamboo stake that I just kind of leaned up against the inner corner here so that they would have a direction to go in. And then there are clips on the opposite side of this rafter. But check these out, they make these berries. And I guess the berries aren't like the normally the part of it that you eat. It's not spinach, it's just kind of supposed to taste like spinach. And I've never tried it before. So we're gonna try it right now. Let's see what I think. It's a very thick succulent leaf and it has this red lining to it, which is so pretty. It's very juicy. It's very salty, which I was not expecting. That's delicious. The reason I chose rattlesnake beans and Malabar spinach for this corner was because they're really heat tolerant. They're supposed to grow well in 80 to 90 degrees. They still didn't take off until it started cooling off up here. So I had initially hoped they would cross over to the cross ties by now, but 
that's okay. I think that the snap peas will. Over here, I just have a couple of these vines that have started to like hang because they just have nowhere to go. So we're gonna train them and clip them a little bit. I might actually just clip it in this one. So you're supposed to be able to just squeeze the top and open it. Sometimes it's easier than others. Pop this in here and push it closed. So we just need one more to get it to go up this part. There we go. Hiding the mess is a big part of this. As much as I allow the greenhouse to be dirty, visual clutter stresses me out a lot. Oops. And when I say I have literally cases of this stuff, I mean it. <laughs> literally cases. So this is the granular fertilizer that I pretty much exclusively use to feed all the gardens. And we need to do a quick feed today because container gardens, especially with veggies, are very, very hungry. So here's the deal. The containers over here, brand new, fresh potting soil, has fertilizer in it. I will amend it soon, but it's okay for right now because it's already got fresh soil in it. These containers, on the other hand, have been going all summer, literally since May, and I fertilize them every three to four weeks. Yes, it is the end of the growing season for these particular plants. However, they're going a little bit nuts. Like, I don't know if you can see right now, but this plant, I can't even count how many peppers it has on it. So they're clearly trying to do one last hurrah, and we are going to let them. So I do not measure this. There are instructions on the side of the pack. However, I'm not really, I'm using stuff in an off-label way here. I'm not following the rules because the rules don't apply to me. It's a hungry plant. A veggie plant is a very hungry plant in general. I'm probably putting around one or two teaspoons per container. And sometimes I'll do more. Earlier in the season, I would do more. I'm not gonna do this ancho because it's only ever made these two and there's absolutely no way an ancho is gonna produce more and get them to ripen by next month. And this one also, I don't even know what this is. This is just a sweet bell pepper. It has a few on it, but I don't see any purpose to adding more fertilizer to that. So just a little quick feed. Before I forget, I'm gonna grab the tot soy from this container. This is everything for fall, but I just yesterday moved over things I will not be replanting versus things that I still have time to do a succession so of. Tot soy, brassica, goes a quarter inch deep. Territorials had really great germination for me so far this fall, but I am gonna just do two seeds in this container just to hedge my bets a little bit. The soil is pre-moistened. I'm gonna pop those in here. And that will be so pretty because we won't have a lot of visible greenery in the greenhouse once we get into November and December and everything is covered with a frost cloth, but Tatsoi doesn't need that protection so we can kind of have a little pop of color over here and I have one going on the desk as well. This setup with the containers has worked pretty well for me. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing, but it is functional. Got this bok choy, bring that in. So aside from a few in the back corner, these are all three and a half gallon nursery pots. I just grabbed the cheapest ones that I could find. One cubic foot of potting soil will fill roughly two of these containers. A three and a half gallon will grow a pepper just fine. It will grow a tomato, an eggplant, even a squash plant just fine. They really don't need that much space. It just gets tricky when you want to plant like multiple things in a single container. So in a perfect world, I would have more elevated beds in here with some kind of drip tray system underneath to protect the floor. The floor is a pressure treated plywood and I've put an exterior floor paint over it. So when it gets wet, it's totally fine. But if I were to actually be watering and having dripping water on the floor every single day, I would be a little bit more concerned. So long-term that's the goal is to do some kind of built-in elevated bench kind of situation here where I don't have like individual circular containers. Like the bed is just the size and shape of the table. But it's nice that the hometown structures greenhouses kind of come as this blank slate because you can change how they function for you over time and make it your own from the start. So 
I started with just folding tables and nursery pots because it was fast and easy and cheap. I'm sure that will evolve just like the other side of the greenhouse has continued to evolve and change. I can't wait to see how it looks in winter and then again in spring as we continue to kind of make those changes. I did have some requests to give the exact details for the build that I have. If you reach out to Hometown Structures and tell them that you saw Dagny's greenhouse, they'll be able to give you that information. I will also put it in a link down below so you can check it out there. All right guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for gardening with me. Make sure you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you next time. Happy gardening.